In today's video, we'll go over camera basics. We'll go over shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO can be thought of as the three pillars of photography. They simply are three different mechanisms in your camera to control the amount of light entering it. Okay, so let's begin and go over shutter speed. Let's try to understand shutter speed using rain as an analogy. Let's suppose it's raining. I give you an empty plastic bucket. I then use a red marker to mark it at a certain level and ask you to collect rainwater exactly up to that level. Well, simple enough, you go out and leave the bucket in the rain. When it reaches the marked level, you bring the bucket indoors and you're done. Another way to accomplish this is to add a lid on the bucket. When you slide the lid open, water starts to fill up in the bucket. As soon as it reaches the desired level, you close the lid and you're done. Interesting enough, the lid you just added to the bucket can be thought of as a shutter, which closes shut and blocks rain entering the bucket. So suppose more of a storm kicks in and it starts to rain heavier. So what's the difference now? Well, the bucket just fills up faster. As an example, if it took 4 minutes to fill up the bucket to the desired level in light rain, it might take only a minute when it's raining heavy. Point I'm trying to make here is that you have no control over how hard it rains. But you do have complete control over how long you leave the lid on your bucket open. Now consider light rays on a sunny day instead of rain. Collecting light works in a similar manner. You leave your bucket out in the sun or any light source to collect light. How long you leave it out in the sun to collect light is simply shutter speed. So back to your camera acting as a light bucket, it pretty much works the same way. We try to reach a certain exposure level or you may call it brightness level. For example, on a cloudy day, it might take you 4 seconds of shutter speed to reach a certain exposure level. Whereas on a sunny day, when it's much brighter, only a second. The term speed in shutter speed may confuse you as speed is not normally measured in seconds. A better term could have been exposure time instead. Actually, some cameras do call it exposure time instead of shutter speed. The speed of the shutter controls the amount of time in seconds it's open for. Shutter speed also helps freeze moving objects in an image. Although the soccer ball on the left and the tennis ball on the right are in motion, shutter speed helps freeze the action. Let's now go over the second pillar, aperture. So what is aperture? Actually, if you just look up aperture in a dictionary, it'll define it as an opening, a hole, or a gap. Yes, that's simple. Let's try to understand aperture going back to our rain analogy. Suppose I now ask you to collect just two drops of rainwater. So remember, it's raining heavy. If you leave the bucket out even for a short amount of time, you end up collecting a lot more than two drops. So let's add a lid back on the bucket. But this time, we take the lid and then poke a tiny hole in the center of the lid. Now, it has an opening. What this will do is start the water collection process and it'll be very slow because of the opening being tiny. You can keep an eye on the bucket and as soon as two drops enter the bucket, you bring it indoors and done. That little opening you just made is aperture. Think of aperture as another way to control the amount of light entering a camera. Aperture or the opening size is varied in a camera and is measured using the term F number. F number determines the size of the aperture or the hole. To compare, the opening is smaller on the left and you collect less light and on the right it's bigger so more light enters the camera. Take a look at these pictures. The one on the left has been shot with a larger aperture compared to the one on the right. Notice how everything is blurry in the background of the bee. That makes an observer look right at the bee. That's the magic of aperture. Everything is in focus on the picture to the right. So aperture along with controlling amount of light entering a camera also controls how much of a picture is in focus or how much of it is blurry. Another interesting note, our eyes work the same way as a camera does. Eyelids act as a shutter which open and close and the pupil 
acts as an aperture and it varies the size of the opening in our eyes. Now let's talk about the third and the last pillar of photography, ISO. So what is ISO? ISO is short for International Organization of Standardization. Wait, shouldn't the abbreviation be IOS then? Yeah, but Apple uses IOS. So we're stuck with ISO. I'm just kidding. This was decided long before Apple's operating system IOS. The reason it's called ISO is because it's derived from the Greek word ISOs, meaning equal. Shutter speed and aperture use standardized units such as seconds for shutter speed and F number for aperture. So a standard had to be set for ISO as well. Well, I often joke around and say ISO is short for It's sensitivity, okay? So what does it do? Well, ISO controls the sensitivity of your camera sensor to light. Okay, let me explain. Let's go back to our rain analogy and try to understand ISO. I again give you the bucket marked at a certain level to fill up. You leave it out in the rain. As the bucket fills up, you keep an eye on it waiting for it to reach the marked level. But guess what? It stops raining. And now you have no more rainwater to collect. Since I'm interested in only rainwater, I have to now cheat and add dirty tap water. I add dirty tap water and fill up the bucket to the water level I need. The difference now is that I don't have pure rainwater in the bucket. It's mixed with tap water. You might say, isn't that cheating? Yes, it sort of is. Changing the ISO helps to reach a certain level of exposure, but with a penalty. You compromise on image quality in a photograph. So changing the ISO adds noise into the photograph. The most important thing to understand about ISO is that it's a trick or a tool that's used not to adjust the amount of light entering your camera, but a tool to get away with whatever amount of light you have available using your shutter speed and aperture. Take a look at the two pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge. Notice the image on the left. It's shot with a low ISO. The image to the right is taken with a high ISO. So it's noisy or grainy. So there we go. We covered the three pillars of photography. Thanks for watching this learnability video.